So, Baldur's Gate 3 has proven that AAA devs are scamming us. Yes, we've all been living in the Matrix and we need to take that pill with Morpheus and escape out and understand that, yes, a small indie dev studio of only 20 employees can turn out a 100-hour game of amazing content, fully voice acted on an incredibly small budget, and we've just been suckers that have been getting scammed. If you watch YouTube, that's the sort of crap you've been hearing about Boulder's Gate 3. And it's a freaking lie. Let me go through in this video reasons why we should have expected the quality of game. I'm not saying that I like a lot of the game. Wait for the review, subscribe and like the channel. But I want to go in this video through why we should have expected the quality that we've seen in Baldur's Gate 3. And while I object to Larian's game play decisions in so many areas, but the overall scale and quality of the game for a quote unquote small indie studio is revolutionary. I mean, it does make you think, right? So here I wanna go against this narrative that seems to just be trending like crazy at the moment, that this is some sort of miracle that shows that Either Larian Games are the messiah that can walk on water, or we're being scammed by AAA game developers, including indie studios. People keep quoting indie studios as AAA game developers in their video titles. I don't know. People hate on me for being wrong. Anyways, let's move on. But before we get to that, there's one conception that has literally been bothering me so much seeing the YouTube coverage of this that I just have to say something about it. And that is that people are treating Larian Game Studios, and I think it's because a lot of people probably never heard of them before the release of Boulder's Gate 3, which surprises me because Divinity 2 was, in my eyes, like a really popular game. But then I live in this space. Larian Games are not a small indie dev. I've heard a lot of people make fun of Outer Worlds from Oblivion, saying, oh, Oblivion. They couldn't achieve what Larian did. Larian games are twice the size of Oblivion. Oblivion have, I think, two offices and between 200 and 250 employees. Larian have five offices and between 400 and 500 employees. It's not comparable. Just because Oblivion ends up with uh, Microsoft as a publisher, that doesn't immediately grant you magical powers to deliver bigger games. That's not how reality works. Publishers are distributors. They don't help you build bigger games. That's not how that works. I have never developed a game or been on a development team. The most experience I have working with game development companies has been as a sound designer or a voice actor. But one of the things that I can tell you about Baldur's Gate 3 is just from the amount of original sound effects just from the voice actors and actresses that they've put in the game, the overall audio budget for Baldur's Gate 3 is probably higher than a game like Hades. Now, that's just me guesstimating about how much these people are paid. I don't want to, like, leak things or say things that might be false. But my general impression, given that I'm well over halfway through the game now, I think, is that... The voice acting and audio budget on this game probably dwarfs most indie projects people are comparing it to on its own, just the audio and the voice acting. So treating this like it's a small budget game and it shows how a great inspired studio can overcome the odds is just not the reality. It's just not the reality. And so now let's get into the reasons why I think Boulder's Gate 3 managed to have this level of quality as an independent publisher. The number one reason that we should have expected this game to be quality is that it's backed by Wizards of the Coast. Yes, I know people hate on Wizards of the Coast. I hate on Wizards of the Coast. We all do. But let's be honest with ourselves. If you've actually played tabletop Dungeons and Dragons, you probably know that the 5e rule set is pretty darn good. And if you're a game developer that already has an engine, this will come up later, that already has an engine and you implement the 5e rule set, well, you're probably gonna have a good time. Why? Because the 5e rule set's pretty darn fun. I've had probably hundreds of hours, way more than that, maybe in the end, of fun on the 5e rule set. 
because it's really, really fun. Big news. And if you don't have to create that yourself, a la what happened with Oblivion Studios and the Pillars of Eternity games, you're going to be in a better position. And if you're the sort of person who thinks, no, man, Banjo, I could easily create my own RPG rule set real quickly. No, you cannot. It's actually quite difficult to do that. Uh, and um, 5e is great. Yeah, that's r reason one. Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition is awesome. The second reason is art design. So we all know, especially from sus Kickstarter games, that many gaming companies begin their um, pitch to so-called supporters with concept art. Well, one of the great things that comes from this game being backed by Wizards of the Coast is that most of the concept art is already sorted out for them. Sure, they need concept art for individual characters and locations, and I wouldn't want to disparage any of the artists involved in location design or character design. But in general, for things like Mind Flayers, Drow, Elves, Dwarves, they all have 5th edition concept art. Wizards of the Coast, again, <laughs> a company that some people don't like, and I understand their reasons, but if Wizards of the Coast do concept art, freaking well magic of the gathering is the best looking card game in the world i'll fight you over it i mean i you, you get the point and what this leads to is the fact that larian games don't need to spend infinite amounts of money concepting a new game they can just take the concept art that's already present in fifth edition model it and then put it in the game that's going to save you an incredible amount of money on concept artists and really restrict the budget of the game to being delivering a game and not art. If you want a game that's delivered a lot of art and no game, check out my video on Pantheon, the MMORPG that's never coming out. The third reason, and this is the one that I've received the most comments from on my videos, uh, I mean, supportive comments as opposed to angry insults and death threats the engine is just divinity 2 like it's literally the divinity 2 engine no modifications other than some what appears to be i think a bit of extra mocap i'm not sure whether it's mocap i'm not an animator but generally the engine has remained more or less untouched this is the divinity 2 engine with some extra cutscenes and stuff but it's basically building on a game that they already tried and tested and had an early access ages ago. So th they've had time to iterate on the basis for this design forever. And sure, there are a lot of other gaming companies that do that, but I find it rare to see a game that is so clearly based on the engine that came before it with very, very, very little modifications. Even the UIs, other than for gameplay mechanics, are largely untouched. It's it's really remarkable. They clearly didn't put a lot of effort into changing the engine and put all their effort into actually designing the scope and story of the game. And maybe that's a good thing, but it does explain why we ended up with such a big game, because ultimately it's about where you put your budgets. <laughs>